All right, everybody, welcome back to Bee Mother Reviews. And we're just returned from New York Comic Con where we had all kinds of fun checking out all the new statues and just all the stuff and happenings at that event. It's a great event. Uh, all our photo content is up on our Facebook page. It'll be up at beemother.com uh, fairly soon. All our video content is over on the Shelf Space YouTube channel, so you can check that out there. But today, we're here to bring you another review. And today we've got from HMO, this is Morgan. Now, HMO is a company that's been around for a few years now, uh, founded by Mufazal. And, you know, they've, they've got a few uh, original IP licenses, the Beastly Beauties, Bounties of Bathos. But by and large, their bread and butter material is gaming statues. They've got, and one of their biggest licenses is Capcom. So Morgan, you know, who is Morgan? As I alluded to, she's from a gaming franchise called Dark Stalkers. Um, and she's really, she's appeared in tons of games since her debut. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom, SNK vs. Capcom, Super Puzzle Fighter. You know, she, she's super popular. She's been in a ton of games. Um, she is a succubus, which is, um, if you're looking at the way she's dressed and, and you, you're hearing the name succubus, um, and you think that's kind of suggestive, go with that. Because a succubus is a demon that takes the form of a human and seduces men in their dreams. Um, very kind of uh, sexual undertones with that uh, type of character. And actually, I, it actually uh, in Latin, succubus means prostitute. So uh, there you go. And, and the male version, I didn't know this, is called an incubus. Uh, I've heard of the band incubus, of course, and I didn't know what it meant until you know, prepping for this review. So, uh, a little tidbit for you there. Um, anyways, Morgan, since she debuted, it just exploded in popularity. She really kind of transcended that gaming genre, in, especially in Japan, where she became super popular in, in anime and, and manga and just, just the general pop culture there. Uh, she's super popular for cosplay. Um, and you look at, uh, you know, her outfit, uh, the the um, kind of erotic nature of her character. Uh, I mean, literally, she has to stay stimulated to stay alive, this character. So it's not hard to see why she's become so famous, especially over in Japan. So very, very cool character. Lots of history and story uh, around her. Um, so if you don't know who she is, check her out. So... She's kind of jumped that barrier from the gaming into more mainstream um, culture, but can she jump another barrier in the statue game and land a spot on your shelves? Let's get into the review and find out. All right, guys, you may have noticed that uh, we got a new YouTube channel here, so uh, a dedicated Bee Mother Reviews channel. And so we're gonna do our reviews a little bit differently now. I'm going to count down my three favorite things about the statue and, and tell you about them here today. So we're going to start off with uh, the base on this statue. So when HMO was, was, was developing this piece, they were given uh, sort of a stack of reference art from Capcom for Morgan. And they said, okay, choose one of these. And they, they were flipping through and they wanted to choose something that, um, you know, really captured her beauty, captured her gracefulness, and also that erotic nature. I mean, she has to look really sexy, of course. Um, it's a key element for her character, so they had to do it, right? Um, so they ended up going with uh, a piece of art from Art Germ, or Stanley Lau. Uh, a piece, you know, you'll probably have seen the image before, and... Um, you know, one thing you'll notice about that image is there's no environment around her. There's, she's not standing on anything. She's kind of floating through the air. Well, that's not going to work for a statue. So HMO had to develop this base and make it look natural for her to be on it and also make it look kind of cool at the same time. So what they've come up with is this sort of rock formation base. And you can see it, you know, from the side, it looks just like, you know, plain old rocks. But as you kind of spin it around, you'll see the rocks there's sort of a parallax effect, and once they align just to the right spot, you see that they form a skull, which is really, really cool. Uh, and then, of course, you got all the bats sort of flying out around her. So I really like that they've 
um, you know, came up with a with a really neat way to have her um, supported properly and kind of capture a little bit more of element of her character with the bats. Um, she was originally intended to be a vampire, I've read, so that's why you get the bat theme with her. But uh, very, very cool base. It's one of my favorite things. Number three on my countdown of favorite things about this piece. And when you look at this piece from this about this angle here, you can see they really nailed that art germ uh, uh, design. So very, very well done by HMO. All right, so number two on my countdown of favorite things about Morgan from HMO is the skin. You can look, she's got a very nice lifelike skin effect there. And uh, what they did or how they achieved that is they actually changed the resin to a polyurethane instead of a poly resin. So what that does is it really picks up nice sharp details. Um, it doesn't have, it doesn't shrink. It's a very low shrinkage effect. And what they're also able to do is actually tint the resin itself and it allows the light to um, enter in and kind of scatter around and it gives it a, a bit of a glowing effect. It gives very lifelike uh, effect to it. And you know, a little bit of shading over top, uh, a little bit of speckling uh, to give it that um, very realistic skin effect. And you know, I, I think it looks fabulous. Uh, if you know, you can see if she was a real person, you'd really want to reach out and touch that. It looks so soft and smooth. Um, and one other thing you're going to notice is between this piece and the one that was originally shown in Singapore uh, last year in 2017, uh, she ha used to have a black strap around her neck. And I presume that was to make it so her head could be removable. Uh, they got rid of that and I think it was really uh, the right call. As you'll see, she's got a nice long lean neck. There's no seams there and it looks really, really nice. Um, so number two, the skin. Very, very cool effect here. Okay, so number one, my most favorite thing about this statue is what really makes it stand out and what really makes it special is the eyes. You're going to take one look at these eyes and you're going to see right away that these are not your typical statue eyes. These look very realistic. They're called real eyes. It's a kind of a trademark or a trade secret invented by HMO. Uh, but I can tell you a little bit about how they're made. Each eye is individually handcrafted. They, they start with the eyeball and then they, they have to paint on, you know, the, the eye itself. And then they encase it in, in a gel, like a UV gel. And it really gives it this three dimensional look. It gives it a little bit of that wet look that real eyes do have. And it just absolutely looks phenomenal, uh, especially on a character like this that has that little, a little more of an anime look and feel where the eyes are a little bit bigger. It just looks amazing. It, it really, truly helps this statue stand out from, you know, the, the huge crowd of, of collectibles out there. HMO is always looking to do something different on their pieces. This one, they, they came up with this real eyes technology and uh, it just looks fantastic. Wrap up this review and I just gave you my three favorite things about the statue. Uh, the parallax effect on the base that just makes it look, you know, fits with the pose so naturally. Uh, the nice, soft, smooth looking, realistic skin effect. And of course the eyes that just really elevate this statue to a new level. Um, but there's still so much more to like about this piece. I mean, the look at the paint design from James TCE, the nice vibrant rich purples on the inside of her wings. She's got these French tip nails that just look so realistic. Um, I'll admit I didn't have any clue what a French tip nail was before this review. So shout out to Sofara from HMO for enlightening me there. Um, the packaging, the packaging was really good on this statue. I mean, someone appeared to have tried to drive a forklift through the shipper box that came with this one, but luckily they lined the entire box with about an inch thick styrofoam that helped protect the statue inside and the art box. There is a uh, assembly manual here 
Uh, it's got all the bat locations on the back. Now you will notice that the bats here don't quite match the locations here on the statue. Uh, so there's a little bit of a trial uh, or a process of elimination uh, with those. And as Sofara told me and as Mufazal told me, the bats are meant to be an adventure for you. So take your time, enjoy it. Uh, and once you get it all together, uh, I mean, you're just going to love it. I mean, Morgan, I think it's safe to say, was HMO's most anticipated statue ever. Uh, super popular character in Japan and, and, and really worldwide now. And I, I think it's safe to say that she is their best production to date. She really turned out fantastic. So if you were one of those ones that has her on order, you're just waiting to see how she turned out, you're going to be really pleased with this one. So... Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a new dedicated b Miller Reviews YouTube channel. Uh, so we hope you come back and check out our reviews in the future. We're going to have a lot more. We got uh, The Quiet Wrath of Son Goku from Sume coming. We got the Joker exclusive from Tweeterhead. And we've got the Wolverine still coming from Sideshow, the new premium format. So lots more to check out soon. We hope you join us and we'll talk to you guys soon.